I'll request Sanjay Bhattarayaji, please come here and offer your delegations. Over to you, sir. Good evening, friends. Uh, my thanks to EIRC for <coughs> asking me to share my thoughts regarding ICDS. Earlier also, if I remember correctly, I had come either once or twice. But this time the program has been made in a workshop way, I think which is more beneficial. And so I had a talk with Mr. Nitesh Mohan and I told since I will not be followed by any co-speaker, I have got enough time to bore you. Now my request to all of you is that when I will be, because I will be dealing with four standards, four ICDS, the first four. So whenever I am raising any issue or this, I want to discuss something, if anyone present here thinks that some more discussion would be beneficial for all of us, then please ask me the, at that very point of time. Don't wait for the last. This is my request to all of you. Well, since it's ICTS and uh, it will have three day workshop, isn't it? Three day. I think being the first person to speak here, I think I have got a responsibility of to talk about the beginning of the ICDS. Although I am sure that each one present here is aware of it. But still, since we are all chartered accountant, that's why it is, I think it is necessary. Let's forget about the accounting standards that we know for this for the discussion of ICDS. Because these, these standards are made only for the purpose of computation of income for income tax purposes. It has got no relevance for the purpose of accounts. Am I correct? Are you sure? Don't you think that any statutory auditor has got any responsibility to know anything about ICDS? Sir, how are you telling no? As a statutory auditor, he has to, he or she has to certify what is the provision for tax. So without going through that compliance of ICDS, if somebody signs the balance sheet, saying that the pro that means certifying the provision for tax, I think so, and many of the per persons present here also think so, but it should be all of us that there is a responsibility cast on the auditor who is certifying the balance sheet to find out whether the tax provision has been correctly mentioned. Otherwise, he has to qualify his report. Now, just before that, a bit history. I will not take more than five minutes time for this. In this entire income tax act, there is only one section which has got the word account. That is section 145. The heading is method of accounting. Now, up in 1997, there was a major change made there. Why major change? Because in that year only, by way of amendment, it was brought that for the purpose of particularly two heads of income, one is profits and gains from business or profession, and the other one is income from other sources, the particular assessee will have to decide which system or which method of accounting he or she or it has to be, it will follow. Either actual or mercantile. Actual, uh, uh, let, me, let me use the word mercantile. Either mercantile or cash system. And in subsection 2 of 145, it had been there, now it is changed. There's the government would be issuing accounting standards for the purpose of computation of income. So in 1996, that means before that amendment was made, in 1996 the government of India, that is CBDT, notified two accounting standards. The first one was disclosure of accounting policies and the second one was in relation to prior period expenditure, prior period adjustments, extraordinary items or change in accounting policies. 
those remain as it is up to 31st March 2016, 2015. Sorry, I must mention one thing here <laughs> that when we do the tax audit report, I am sure that you will remember that there is a query that whether accounting standards as per section 145 has been followed or not. That meant only for those two standards, not the ICI. But sometimes we write so many things there. But whatever it is, when the present finance minister presented his budget and he presented his full finance bill, that was finance number 2 bill 2014, then what he said in his speech, that I just want to quote. Why I am doing that thing? If still some people, but I am sure that none present here will have that. If still some people have got in the mind that whether it will be required to maintain two books of accounts, what we will do for the accounts after this ICTS has come, that's why I just want to make a reference to the finance minister's speech delivered on July 10, 2014, when he presented his first full budget, para number 128. It is a seven and a half, eight and a half line, so I am reading it out. There is an urgent need to convert the current Indian accounting standards with the international financial reporting standards in bracket IFRS. I propose for adoption of the new Indian accounting standard in bracket IND AS by the Indian companies from the financial year 2015-16 voluntarily and from the financial year 2016-17 on a mandatory basis. Based on the international consensus, the regulators will separately notify the date of implementation of AS in for the banks, insurance companies, etc. He did not stop there. Then there was another six, six word sentence. Standards for the computation of tax would be notified separately. That was the last line of that particular paragraph. And in that year, by that particular bill, which became subsequently the Finance Number 2 Act 2014, the Section 145.2 and 145.3 were amended. The words accounting standards, which had been existing there, were replaced by income computation and disclosure standards. It was made with effect from assessment year 2015-16. But this ICDS has come at the end of March 2016, March 2015, to make it effective with effective from the assessment year 2016-17. So you can understand though the changes were made there, this ICDS have been notified from a later year. That is the financial year which we have just completed. That is the, that has been the first accounting year or financial year for which ICTS have been made effective. Now I just want to bring your attention to 145.3. This is this particular subsection of three or four lines makes us understood the importance of ICTS. Again I am telling, I am sure that everybody is aware of it, but still I am just bringing Mentioning this. Section 145.1 says either cash or mercantile system for those two heads of income. I, section 145.2 says like this the central government may notify in the official gadget from time to time income computation and disclosure standards, that is the replaced words, to be followed by any class of assessees or in respect of any class of income. Then comes the subsection 3. Please hear it carefully. It had been there, but the changes that has been made, certain changes have been made, and the changes that have been made have been made with effect from assessment year 2015 16. 
where the assessing officer is not satisfied about the correctness or completeness of the accounts of the assessee, or where the method of accounting provided in subsection 1 has not been regularly followed by the assessee, then the important thing, or income has not been computed in accordance with the standards notified under subsection 2 ICDS. The assessing officer may make an assessment in the manner provided in section 144. That means my non-compliance with any of the ICDS <coughs> may result in an ex parte assessment. That's why the importance one can understand. At the beginning of each standard, some common things have been written. What are those common things? In all these states, 1 to 10, that this is meant only for computation of income. No, it has got no connection for maintenance of accounts. Then also this thing, that this is meant only for parcels following mercantile system of accounting. Mind you, the second thing that I just now uttered, these standards are meant for only the persons maintaining their accounts under mercantile system of accounting. But section 145 does not say so. It says you follow either cash or mercantile. So in future it may be like that, that if whoever is following cash system, they will also be brought under this thing. That may happen. I am not telling that will happen. of cash system, the, there will be two or three standards that may be applicable, not all. The very important thing that could be applicable is valuation of inventory. I also, I am not clear that if a person following cash system of accounting does not follow the, the, the formula that we have given, whether the assessing officer will have any power to say anything. But we will come, come to that. Now, I, I think that most of you, if not all of you, have seen the prescribed ITRs 4, 5, 6. That has been that have been prescribed for the assessment year 2016-17. Now, like everybody, I was also interested to see that how they have mentioned there this about the ICDS. What I have found that in that OI there is other information which is supposed to be filled in only by a person who is under tax body. But everybody knows that if you don't fill up that thing, you cannot fill in the form. Whether you are required for tax audit or not, it's a compulsory required to fill in that for, fill in that particular schedule. There, there is a query that what are the effect of ICDS, and a reference has been made to a to an ICDS schedule, and that ICDS schedule shows one to ten, and there is one eleven row also to say the total, and the effect of each ICDS has to be written there. Nothing more than that. But when we go through these standards, you will find that at the end of every standard, like our accounting standards <coughs> notified by our institute, there is a specific space where one has to see what things are required to be disclosed. And when we go through that disclosure, then one will understand that what more, what if, if what amount of details have to be given, but how that could be given, how that could be disclosed, that is not clear yet, because in the return form there is not much space. We will we'll discuss about it uh, later on. Before I go to that details, only one more thing, that in the month of December 2015, it came out in the paper that during one uh, speech, maybe at some chamber or 
know, associate mark somewhere. The finance minister told that the Ministry of Finance had received so many suggestions, so many, I should say, so many difficulties faced by the people in implementing ICDS. So we assured that we will all look into this and if needed, then we will mix the required amendments. As far as my knowledge goes, till now, this there has not been any alteration or amendment made to these 10 ICDS. Now, friend, so I had I had told about my first experience when I went through this ICDS, but still at that meeting there was not no, not so much people. So I just want to tell my experience. It's a very funny experience, let me tell you. The very first time I went through this, that is this ICDS. I, was, I became very glad to find out that the person or persons who have framed it were of my, my child. Why? Because when I was in school, in 6, 7 or 8, we started learning how to write essays, how to write basis, how to write letters, how to write dialogues. I was in a Bengali medium school, so it was very hard for me to know it. And particularly for a person, for a boy like me, who was a very bad student. So what I used to do, if I would have been sitting in that chair, and it is more of my left side and Sonuja and on right side. When she or he used to write an essay, I used to copy her first paragraph and make my second paragraph. His seventh paragraph, my first paragraph, like this thing. So that nobody at a glance can understand that this is a copy. <laughs> that very good. The people who have framed it, The people who have done it are, have done the same thing. They have just copied the ICIA standards and then they have to input whatever they wanted that this relief should not be given. Only some. Otherwise, if you compare it, you will find the full stop, comma, just same. But as I told you, here the definition is given in seventh paragraph, they have given the definition in second paragraph. Like this thing they have changed. But they should have acknowledged. <laughs> this is, so when we copy, we did not acknowledge it, but after the examination, everybody of us, from whose exercise book I have noted, uh, copied, I used to tell, and I, I am sure that whoever has done it, he or she has also done it, the thanks, that because you have saved me. But they have not acknowledged. This is the first weakness of the income tax department. Whatever it is, but out of these 10 standards, for one standard, they had to use their own brains. That is the standard on securities. Why? Because the security standard, that is ICDS number 8, that is in relation to the securities only when those are considered as stock items. Well, our case 13, that is for investment. So there some some brain exercise had to be carried out by them. Now I am coming to the standards. Case 1, our, our actually what I propose, I think you will all agree, there is no meaning of my telling what is in ES1 and copied here. But where there are devi deviations are there, that I think that is more required to be highlighted. In my small write-up which Nitesh has got it in the reference, I made those points, the deviations, where the deviations are, that I have pointed out, whatever it is. No, ES1 is disclosure of accounting policy. ICDS 1 is accounting policy, but at the last, as I told you, it is disclosed that they require. Now, though I am not directly from commerce, I had base of science, but still when I changed to this uh, charter accountancy, I had to also know the fundamental principles of accounting. 
that going concern, accrual, and all these things. That they have followed. But in I in in I see uh, in in AS one, not only in AS one, one thing has been taught to us, whether by your experience or from seniors, that never consider anticipated profit, but always take into account the anticipated loss. Why? Because that is called prudence. Everybody knew that. Whether it is correct or wrong, I am not going to say. Here, and there are three things. Prudence, then substance over form and material, materiality. We understand that in income tax materiality has got no space. When we do the audit or when we do the accounts, if there are items of 700, 800 or whether billions or figures are there, even thousands or lakhs of figures, that also we don't consider because those are not material. But for income tax, you cannot. If the, money, if the amount is more than 10 rupees, you have to take it into account. So, non-consideration of materiality, I think nobody can object. But non-consideration of prudence, something you know, because the prudence word has got a connection with the, a person being prudent. So, here the prudence has been taken out. But how they have done? In AS, at this ICDS one, they have written like this. Since I have got this standard in my hand, that's why I am telling. The treatment and presentation of transaction and events shall be governed by their substance and not merely by their legal form. This is the only thing they have written. They have omitted their materiality and also this prudence. And they have specifically mentioned it that expected loss cannot be considered. Expected loss cannot be recognized unless the recognition of such loss is in accordance with the provisions of certain other ICS. That is what they In 2012, sometime in August or October or in between that, 